So we're joined here by one of the editors of the Colorado Sun, Larry Rickman, a former Denver Post staffer. You have gotten some of the biggest names to come out of the Post as, as that paper has spiraled, collecting them for this new venture. How will the Sun succeed where so many others have tried and failed? You know, we have a great team. I mean, each person there is, uh, is a star in their own right, experts in their field, and we are just going to do excellent journalism. You know, we felt that the, the old model for us did not work and that there had to be a better way, and we think that we found that. We've been very fortunate in finding partners who are interested in providing a platform but not being a publisher. Uh, we're doing things differently. We are 100% uh, journalist owned. You know, we are the masters of our own destiny. and. Um, we're going to do great journalism. At the end of the day, it'll be up to Coloradans to decide whether or not uh, this resonates with them, and, and we, hope, we, we hope that it will. So full disclosure, I gave to your Kickstarter. Thank you. I am rooting for you guys. <laughs> I encourage other people to do the same if they're able. You guys have raised an impressive amount of money in what, 24, 48 hours? 24 hours, really. Yeah, how much? We're, I think we're approaching $50,000. Our stated goal for the next month was $75,000, and it's been a little bewildering, honestly, because we've been, all of us, journalists for such a long time that money usually goes the other way. It's, uh, it's been great frankly, to see people in the community stepping up and asking us how they, how they can help and, and actually putting uh, their money behind that. We've had people from across the states, you know, from all political persuasions reaching out and just saying, how can we help? Our office space is, uh, is being donated at the moment to us. So, you know, everything about this is, is very organic that way. People are passionate about saving local journalism, and that's why we're doing this. You've been frank about the fact that you're going to need monthly subscribers. How much are people going to be asked to pay a month, and what are they going to get in return? Well, we're asking people to pay five dollars a month uh, initially for the subscription to the to the Colorado Sun, and uh, they're going to be getting great journalism. They're going to be getting watchdog journalism. They're going to be getting investigative journalism. They're going to be getting just sweet, long-form narrative reads. They're going to be getting stories that help them understand Colorado and the issues and the people and the places that tie us together as a community. How much of it? That's the question for me. Uh, I know these writers. I respect these writers. I'm interested in their work, but how much of it am I going to get a month for my money? Oh, you're going to get uh, fresh stories every day. I mean, we will, have, uh, we will have fresh content every day because in addition to our team members, uh, we will have a healthy network of uh, freelancers and other contributors. Chuck Plunkett, our former editorial page editor at the Denver Post, will be a regular contributor to the Denver, to the Colorado, I'm still saying the Denver Post. It, old habits are hard to break, uh, to the Colorado Sun. So I, I hear you saying that you're going to focus on investigative journalism, you're going to focus on narrative storytelling, on explanatory journalism. That's also where the Post is trying to focus with its diminishing resources. Are you guys competing with the Post? You know, I suppose that's one way of looking at this, but I would say that we're going to be complementing the post. I mean, as, you bo as we both know, uh, there are a lot of people doing great journalism in this town. You guys are doing great journalism. So is uh, Denverite. So is the Colorado Independent and Westward and others. You know, but we think there's plenty of uh, news to go around and plenty of great stories to be told. I think Coloradans were well served by the decades of fierce competition between the Denver Post and the Rocky Mountain News. Now, I'm not saying that we're the heir to the Rocky Mountain News by any means. We're, we're not. But uh, I think competition is a good thing. It will raise everybody's game. One thing that you guys are doing that I think is really important, and this goes for everybody in journalism these days, is try not to duplicate the work of others. You're trying to do original work that you can't see in other places. How many, how many subscribers do you think you're going to need to make this work? Have you figured that out? You know, we're still kind of sorting that out. I mean, clearly uh, it seems unlikely that we will be successful and sustainable through subscriptions alone. We're also going to be looking to uh, form partnerships where it makes sense, where others have values that align with our own, which is to say we're nonpartisan, we're independent, you know, all of those kinds of things. So we're open to other uh, investors uh, down the road, to those who just believe in local journalism and we've had people who have just said you know what no strings attached you know here's a thousand bucks you know we want to help you we believe in your mission I want to explore that so so if somebody wants to come in with money to support local journalism then you'll take it but it has to be no strings attached well yes I mean initially now if somebody wants to come with us it's one thing to offer us a thousand dollars no strings attached if somebody comes to us with ten million dollars I'm not going to turn them away uh, we'll talk 
but uh, again, that would be the sort of thing that um, their, their goals would have to align with ours. I mean, we, we know what corporate journalism looks like. Uh, we will never sell to an Alden Global Capital or something along those lines. We are very firm about remaining journalist-owned, journalist-controlled. One of the intriguing things about the proposition that you've set up is this is funded by Civil Media, which is backed by a blockchain corporation. They want to see how that's going to interface with news and whether that's one possible way to, to monetize news. Um, we're not going to get into a 15-minute discussion <laughs> about that right now. Right. But is that a tiny sliver of your revenues? Is that a significant portion of your revenues? Certainly subscribers are going to be the bulk of your revenues, correct? Absolutely, yes. Okay. And, and sub again, just to be clear, subscribers uh, don't have to have any interaction at all with crypto economics or any understanding of it or any of those things. If someone wants to subscribe and, and give us five bucks uh, via a credit card, we're happy to take it, and that's as much as they would need to, to know about the rest of it. You know, to us, it's about uh, not using the old models of advertising supported uh, journalism. You know, we know that, uh, you know, chasing the clicks uh, that uh, advertisers demand is just really not a sustainable model, not for us, not at our level. And we think it's much more important to, to form a, a, a bond with Coloradans and with readers and demonstrate that this is news you're not going to get someplace else. We're going to provide unique local stories that we hope people find valuable. And at the end of the day, it's, that's what it's down to. Do we make a connection with, uh, with our readers? End of last week on this program, we celebrated the two-year mark for Denverite, uh, which is kind of an eternity for an online news startup. It means that they've got a toehold. You guys have got two years of funding lined up. Is that the deal? And then you kind of start to go on your own? We have at least two years. I mean, I don't think that there's any clock uh, ticking on us. You know, we hope to uh, have a long-term relationship with Civil, and I know that they hope to have a long-term relationship with us. They're, they're not your uh, conventional venture capitalists who come in and expect to, to get out in two years or three years or something like that. We're anticipating this will be a long-term partnership. Frankly, none of us would have gotten involved in this if we didn't feel the money was solid and that the commitment was solid and the mission was solid. We're all passionate believers in local journalism, and that's what this is about. Civil wants a ton of newsrooms like the Colorado Sun. You guys are the first, will be the first first when you start publishing? We are the first in Colorado, certainly. Civil has other newsrooms that it is supporting uh, mm -hmm. around the country, um, for instance, in Chicago and New York City uh, and some other places. But we, we certainly are the first in, in Colorado. The f they're calling it the first fleet. Uh, the first fleet uh, launched uh, last week. Do you anticipate the Sun having a, a voice? an editorial presence, anything like that, the things that people have come to associate with a lot of legacy media? You know, we, uh, we are going to be nonpartisan. We're going to play it down the middle. We're going to uh, be straight shooters. Uh, we hope to reflect a variety of viewpoints in Colorado because that's who we are as Coloradans. You know, we all bring uh, a variety of viewpoints. But yes, we will have some voices. Uh, we will have uh, some, what we're saying, reported uh, opinion pieces. Again, Chuck Plunkett, Chuck Plunkett uh, will be one of the voices. And we hope to have others as well uh, because that, that's also who we are as Coloradans. And, you know, again, we don't, uh, aren't going to come to the table with a particular viewpoint. We hope to uh, be able to present many viewpoints. You have a small but mighty staff. Do you anticipate enlarging it over the course of the next year or two? We do. Uh, we have eight uh, staff members right now. We intend to, uh, to grow, but we intend to grow uh, responsibly and sustainably. You know, we are all owners uh, of the Colorado Sun, and we don't want to put ourselves in a position of growing uh, too big too fast. We don't want to be in a position of ever having to lay off uh, our friends and colleagues. And I know people will ask this question, which is, do you ever see a print publication tied to the sun, or is that just not something you're ever going to get into? You know, print is, is not something that's uh, in our plans uh, for today, but, you know, if the need were there someday uh, and we needed to step in and fill that kind of role for the community, we would be happy to. I mean, we are all strong believers in the Denver Post. You know, the Denver Post has been uh, an important institution in Colorado for 125 years. And here's hoping that it's a strong in institution for another 125 years. I love spreading out the Denver Post in the morning and, and reading it and folding, unfolding the paper and reading stories. And um, if, uh, if the community demands that we provide a print product someday, we're happy to, uh, to serve. Last question for you. Envision this out beyond just your two-year startup. If this, if this clicks, 
if this clicks with people, uh, no pun intended, uh, and you, you get the subscribers and you get that base, what could this become? You know, we hope to grow. We hope to uh, be just an important voice in Colorado. You know, today we're eight, and I don't know where we'll be in two years or five years or ten years. I hope we will continue to grow. We'll grow as big as Colorado needs us to be, and, uh, and we will serve whatever function that Colorado needs us to, to serve. Are we going to be the place to read about uh, yesterday's Rockies game or tomorrow's Broncos game? No. Will we be the place to go to read about a stabbing on Colfax? No. But could we uh, help understand the intersection of sports and society? Yes. Could we help talk about, you know, why is crime rising or why is it falling and really understanding the state? And, and you know, to me, we're so excited about getting launched on this and uh, sky's the limit. I'm encouraged for you. Uh, you have a great team. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, we'll read your work here. We'll share your work here. And uh, come back often, please. Thank you. ColoradoSun.com. Very good. Thanks, Larry. Thank you.